Ed, Ed, and Eddie is a show that I watched a lot growing up. It was one of the big Cartoon Network shows at the time. I put it up there with The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, Courage the Cowardly Dog, and Codename Kids Next Door. Yet, for some reason, I don't see much love for Ed, Ed, and Eddie out on the internet. Honestly, I don't think most of that core Cartoon Network block gets as much attention as the contemporary Nickelodeon shows still do now. I mean, we get it. SpongeBob was a big show. But to me, those other Cartoon Network shows were just as good. The big difference is that those Cartoon Network shows came to an end right before social media blew up for that generation of viewers, and I think these shows got the short end of the stick. They weren't old enough to be nostalgic, and they weren't still on so they couldn't be current. I'm partly making this video just so I can give one of those shows its due, but also because Ed, Ed, and Eddie has one of the best endings of any cartoon series of its time, or still to this day, and no one talks about it. The ending is all presented in the Ed, Ed, and Eddie Big Picture Show. This movie aired as the official conclusion to the series back in 2009, and some of you may not even be aware of its existence. It didn't have a theatrical release and was instead a 90 minute made for TV movie. But right from the jump, you can tell that the production budget was higher than just an average episode, and the movie feels different. From the opening shots, the big picture show already feels more cinematic. There is no theme song intro, although I did miss that little jingle. Instead, the movie opens up on shots of the cul-de-sac interspliced between the opening credits. Everything is quiet and it builds up to the reveal that the cul-de-sac has been destroyed in some kind of cartoonish disaster. We then get going with Ed running into his room, panicked, trying to take his sock off and then packing up all of his belongings into it, with a couple of in-jokes thrown in there. He's getting ready to go on the run. From this intro alone, you can tell that the movie is for fans of the show. If you know these characters as well as you should after five seasons, then you already have full context for what is going on in this movie. It should be clear to you that one of the trio's scams went too far this time, resulting in some kind of disaster, and that Ed, Ed, and Eddie are going to have to go on the run or face the consequences of their actions. And they don't much like facing the consequences of their actions. Without a detailed explanation of the pre-film events, this movie communicates the circumstances to its audience, and it trusts its audience to go on this journey with the characters. This is exemplified by the movie never explaining what even went wrong that caused this disaster. All the movie does is mention that it was another one of their scams gone wrong, and you know these characters well enough to know that whatever happened was 100% their fault, but the disaster wasn't their intention. They were just looking to make a couple cents. The reason this movie doesn't show you the scam and the buildup and failure surrounding the scam is because unlike the standard Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode, this movie isn't about the scam. This movie is about all of the characters you've come to know in the cul-de-sac over the years. You can watch this movie and generally understand what is going on without ever having seen Ed, Ed, and Eddie, but this movie is clearly one made for the fans by a group of creators who care about their characters and want to give them a true-to-form send-off. This movie ends the series while developing its characters in a way that makes it a definitive ending to the chapter and all of their lives that was Ed, Ed, and Eddie. I'll explain what I mean about the development of its characters and how that development acts as the perfect send-off to the series in a bit, but first I want to run through the premise of the big picture show. So in this movie, Ed, Ed, and Eddie go on the run from the cul-de-sac. They are being chased by the extremely battered and beaten neighborhood kids. It looks like whatever went wrong with the scam really messed everyone up, and they seem to have the right to be extremely angry. I'm not sure if we've ever seen anyone this screwed up. I mean, Ralph has a massive bite taken out of his stomach, and Johnny has a bear trap clasped across his head. So to escape, the Ed boys go into Eddie's older brother's room and break out using the car in there, operating on the power of Ed's legs. After they escape their pursuers, Eddie has the idea to go to his brother's house to lay low because his big bro will protect them. Double D and Ed are very excited about this idea. They've never met Eddie's older brother, but from all the stories Eddie has told over the series, they are expecting to meet this pinnacle of coolness. So they set off on that journey with the others still in pursuit. This seemingly simple premise takes the characters we know out of their standard situation and hurls them on a journey towards something new, and the movie uses that as an opportunity to show you something new about the characters as well. The little bit of new information the movie drops provides just enough to show the characters in a new light, particularly Eddie, to a point where what drove all of the action of the TV show would now no longer apply after this movie. A decent portion of the series was driven by Eddie's newest scam. 
The goal of the scam was always to get the other kids in the cul-de-sac to give them money so they can buy jawbreakers. That's the gist of most of the Ed, Ed, and Eddie episodes. It was always clear that Eddie was the main driving force and the jawbreakers were an enticement for the other two to join in on the scams. But as the series progressed, it became more clear that there was more to Eddie than just some miniature scam artist. He was definitely depicted with a Napoleon syndrome and wanted to be more popular and cool than he was perceived as by the other kids. But deeper than that was this glorification of his older brother that Eddie clung onto and presented as if it were something he held above everyone else's heads. Eddie had a cool older brother, so that made him cool by association, and if the other kids didn't see that, then they were the lame ones. Eddie is so transfixed by his older brother, a character who is never even shown in the TV show, that the creators decided to make the reveal of Eddie's brother the focal point of the series' conclusion. To say that using Eddie's brother as an end goal for this movie and this series was brilliant would be an understatement. This is an example of fan service done right. This isn't some niche character who only a diehard viewer of Ed, Ed, and Eddie would understand. References to Eddie's older brother are abundant throughout the series, and in a series that never shows us what adults look like, despite them actually being presumably present within the home or at work the entire series, the absence of Eddie's brother is really the best look at Eddie's home life that we get. Not only does using Eddie's brother finally give viewers a look at a character referenced over years, but the way the other characters think about Eddie's older brother and later on the reveal of Eddie's older brother serve to build a thematic end and also put the series in a context necessary in order to make the selfish actions of its lead characters understandable. While the journey to Eddie's brother is the crux of the motivation of the story, we still are focusing largely on the three main characters as they make this journey. This gives the characters as well as the viewers time to focus on the three characters as they relate to each other without any outside influence. This isn't like any other time though. The characters feel as though the threat to them is real enough that they can't return home. This is a time of crisis and the cracks in their friendship begin to show, particularly between Double D and Eddie. Double D has always been the brains of the operation and often grows frustrated with the antics of his two friends while he's trying to solve their problems. Several times throughout this movie, Double D is directly punished by Eddie and Ed for his good-natured and logical attempts to guide them safely as well as his genuine affection and care for his friends. This forms the crux of Double D's arc in this movie as well as his role in helping to incite Eddie's own character arc which is more fully fleshed out by the end. Towards the end of the movie, after a quicksand gag is taken too far, Double D decides it's time for him to go home. Eddie and Ed don't want Double D to do so, but as children, it's not exactly easy to find the words to tell a friend that. So instead, Double D and Eddie get into a fight while Ed watches on in horror. However, to Eddie's credit, right before things seem to split off for good, Eddie does manage to say something to keep Double D around. He finally admits that everything that has gone wrong was his fault, and he begins to cry and beat himself up over it. Double D is touched by this and sees something in Eddie that changes his mind about leaving. So Double D's willingness to finally stand up for himself, go back home, and accept his punishment rather than take Eddie's abuse serves as a defining character moment for himself but is also what begins Eddie's character arc. We will get back to that after we conclude the plot. So everyone makes it to Eddie's big bro's house at around the same time and it's revealed that he's a total douche who is likely just a carny. Eddie pleads to stay with him for a while and Big Bro agrees, but then starts kicking the crap out of Eddie in front of everyone, mocking his height and just clearly exerting his power over him while Eddie begs him to stop. For a show known for its over-the-top cartoon violence and general absurdist tone, this scene does stand out as one where a character really took the physical abuse too far. It's not even close to the most violent thing the show has ever put to screen, but the ways the characters react to the violence is what clues the viewer in that this isn't okay. The betrayal of Eddie's brother takes a while to sink in as everyone watches as he bashes Eddie against his house non-stop, then Double D stands up to Big Bro but isn't able to take him on physically. Even the others who have gathered around the house, whose original intentions were to beat up the Ed boys, now have become enraged at Eddie's treatment and are getting ready to do something to stop it. It is only by Ed's brilliant thinking that Big Bro is smacked in the face with a door and knocked out which also gives Ed his own small moment of character growth by making him momentarily not the dumbest person in the world. From here, Eddie is battered and bruised on the floor, surrounded by everyone he knows, and he begins to cry. He admits he made up all the stories he told about his brother over the years because he wanted to seem cool and he wanted people to like him. He laments his constant actions and scams and wonders when he'll ever learn. Then the Ed boys are lifted up by their friends and treated compassionately as they declare their happiness that Eddie is okay. In this Rudy-like moment, everything looks like it's finally turned around for them. Kevin even offers to buy them all jawbreakers and invites everyone to go hang out at his place. 
Double D gives us some meta commentary that it only took so long for them to be liked, but we get the sense that this experience has forever changed the eds in the eyes of the other cul-de-sac kids. Particularly Eddie, who has always been the most contentious. By seeing Eddie abused, by seeing that all his bravado was a mask he used because he wanted the others to like him, and by lamenting his actions, the other kids come to accept him as one of them. Of course, this is a comedy cartoon, so Johnny and Plank show up too late to understand the context and attack the Eds, but he is swiftly dealt with and beaten by the others who are now friends with the Eds. Therefore, this show implies that going forward, Eddie will no longer feel the need to scam the other cul-de-sac kids in order to get attention. The chapter of their lives which Ed, Ed, and Eddie encompassed when they were outsiders is now over. Thus, Ed, Ed, and Eddie can no longer continue, the dynamic has changed, and the show must end because a new chapter has begun. I think this is probably the best conclusion to a long-running cartoon that I've seen. Not including anime, obviously. But for a more episode of the week, episodic structured show, I think that the big picture show helped wrap up its three main characters and develop them out of the roles they played in the series in a believable way. Eddie's arc is the big one, but it doesn't come out of nowhere. The genius of Eddie's arc is that it was incited by Double D's arc and a defining moment for Eddie and Double D's friendship. These aren't extremely planned out and complicated character arcs, but in this film they seem to develop naturally from how the characters have always been presented. Eddie's isn't the most well-developed Breaking Bad style arc, but again, these are children. And enough time passes in between the fight with Double D and Eddie to when they arrive at Eddie's brother's house that you can reasonably assume Eddie had some time for more introspection. So Eddie is only able to grow with the friendship of Double D. One of the two people Eddie cherishes as a friend set an ultimatum to hold Eddie to a standard, and Eddie made the right choice and apologized for his actions. Not because Double D forced him to by some threat, but because if he didn't, he'd lose a friend. So although Double D doesn't necessarily change as a character in this movie, he does serve as an important catalyst for why Eddie would grow as a person. Double D has always been the conscience of the group, so he doesn't develop, but his goal is achieved. Ultimately, the characters' relationships to each other, as well as their understanding of who each other are as individuals, leads to a situation where things cannot just go back to how they were throughout the run of Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Too much has been revealed and developed for that to remain the status quo. And in that way, this movie ultimately concludes the long-running kids cartoon by having its characters mature. While I didn't talk about it in the bulk of this video, every single side character also gets their due in this movie. The developments aren't as significant as Eddie and Double D's, but everyone gets a nice send-off that is either played up for comedy or hints at a possible future as these characters continue to grow up. Kevin and Naz have a small romantic subplot, finally implying that the two of them will get together. Rolf has an adventure with Wilbur, his infamous pet pig. Jimmy and Sarah get involved with the Kanker sisters. And of course, Johnny and Plank have a superhero quest of their own. The series even ends on a callback song from a previous episode led by Jimmy's beautiful singing voice. In a series conclusion, you want to make sure you wrap up your main characters, but when you can manage to get out one last triumphant appearance of the supporting characters that made the show what it is, then you have truly succeeded in a satisfying ending. This movie really is a love letter to fans of this series, a series I hope begins to get the attention it deserves as a classic Cartoon Network show with one of the best conclusions out of any of its contemporary rivals. Say what you will, but it is slapstick at some of its cartooniest greatness. It's a show I don't think should be forgotten, and one I loved up until the end. I'm curious to know your thoughts on Ed, Ed, and Eddie as a series. Is this one you watched growing up, or was it something that flew under your radar? Have you ever even heard of this movie before today? And what other cartoon series do you know of that have great endings? Let me know all this down in the comments. And if you like this, maybe you'll like these other guys on your screen now. Thank you for taking the time to watch this. I appreciate your love, and until next time, that's about that.